Hey, I'm Dave. Thanks for checking out Kotaku Bonsai. So I connected with someone on Facebook uh, Marketplace who's got a uh, Japanese maple tree that they want dug up. And so I'm going to go do the work and bring the tree home. Now, it's July 11th, and this is really a terrible time to be uprooting a Japanese maple. But the alternative is certain death for this tree. So, you know, it's worth a shot. So it's about an hour and a half drive away, and uh, we're going to mosey on down there, see what we can bring home. Cool. Okay, here we are at the dig site. Beautiful tree, and we're going to try to get started getting this guy out of the ground. It's going to be a real nice bonsai. Okay, so just within about 10 minutes, here's everything I cut off. Here's what's still in the ground. So, in a short amount of time, we're going to have a nice little twin trunk. Something like that. So, now on to the heavy stuff. So, we're back home now. Here's what I got. It's going to be a really nice split trunk. Type of uh, mon bonsai maple. Blah, blah, blah. And, unfortunately... Like a lot of the other trees, I think this guy's got verticillium in there. So, you know, his chances of survival are, you know, iffy, but long term, with the fungal infection, I just hope that, you know, I can get some good years of growth out of this guy. So, here's the pot he hopefully will fit into. This is about a 13 gallon pot. And I'm going to go and hose out the roots to get any of the, it's kind of a heavy clay soil. Try to hose that out. I'm going to seal up the cuts with cut paste. Probably do a little trim to get a little more foliage off selectively. Uh, that's good practice, of course, when roots have been severed uh, to reduce transpiration and, wa and water loss. So I'm going to do a little work and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so... I put cut paste on all the all the cuts, trimmed off that one uh, halfway back up here, pretty much left that guy alone. I trimmed off as many large roots as I could without really hacking away the feeder roots, and it is still not going to fit in this 13 gallon pot. So I'm going to go get a new one so that I don't have to hack away so many feeder roots in the middle of hot summer and get another bag of dirt so anyway unfortunately this is gonna have to wait till tomorrow i'm just gonna water it good tonight cover it probably and uh check it back out tomorrow so we'll finish off the video then Thanks. well here's the finished product this is day two and uh i couldn't find a larger pot so i had to use the one i have so i did some real surgical pruning to the real large roots tried to spare as many feeder roots as I could but I got it in there and it, it kind of warps the pot a little bit it's a little oblong but that's no big deal and I got fresh uh, soil in there shadow it's got some nice surface roots underneath uh, most of them are buried right now on purpose but it's a good looking tree Uh, you know, outwardly pretty healthy, despite some signs of verticillium. Maybe even over here, get out of the shadow. But, you know, you can see that this will make a really nice split trunk. Reminds me of like a Peter Chan twin trunk, where, uh, you know, this will probably end up dying back and getting ground off. Maybe start a new leader about here and just have real good taper in no time so if you think uh 
there's my hand. So, you know, it's a good six inch base. So, uh, well, about six, uh, one to six ratio. So we should look at about a 36 inch tall tree when it's all done. It's gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna put this under the deck here to be in full shade for the next couple weeks as the roots rebound. And uh, really happy with this one. It's amazing what you can get for free if you look, look around. All right, so I hope that gives you some uh, inspiration. And we'll move on to the next one.